MZ here, and welcome back again to the Eclipse Center. Um, yeah, I know I keep changing the name, but you're just gonna kind of roll with it with me, because that's a long freaking name for me to pronounce every time. Anyways, uh, last episode we kind of got a little bit of a backstory on what's going on and why this town is so-called abandoned or forgotten. Um, we also kind of dealt with, uh, our poor childhood friend, uh, she was, I don't know, she was acting kind of funny and acting a little weird, <clears throat> and, uh, so we took her back, and we ended up running into this girl, and it was really weird, because he ran into her, well, he didn't, like, run into her, but he he came across her, scared her half to death, and uh, she fell over, hurt her leg, and he started massaging her leg. It was, um, oh, excuse me, it was really kind of awkward, my opinion. I mean, it seemed like normal, but at the same time, you know, she seemed kind of taken aback by it, or she didn't really have a reaction to it at all, and in the end, he asked for forgiveness, saying he's sorry, he should have uh, not been so mean to her. And, uh, can she forgive us? That's kind of the big question. She's really kind of cute, though. I don't really know how I feel about the maid outfit, though. A little, little out of place. Because she's got, like, the, um, the whole Alice in Wonderland giant bow thing going on in the back. Seems more like a cosplay uniform than a than a uh, actual maid outfit, but sorry, headphones were acting weird. Anyways, um, <clears throat> so uh, finally apologized and asked if she could forgive us, and she, <clears throat> and she just sure. Wow, dude, you got off lucky. Most girls I know that you scare them to death. They're either going to suck you in the face, or, let's say they don't do that, they fall, hurt themselves. You start rubbing their leg, they're probably going to suck you in the face. Or scream, and then cops show up and, and all sorts of bad things happen. So this one's apparently pretty easy going. You're freaking lucky, dude. Seriously. She nods her head. Uh, thank you. It's okay. I'm going to leave since you are okay. The town has been very dangerous recently, so you need to be very careful. If I were a killer, you would be dead by now. What? Really? You... I can't believe he just said that. <clears throat> wow. Dude, bad, bad call. Are you freaking serious? Well, anyways, holy crap, she has no awareness of safety and is easily carried away by the stuff she likes, and she just, she's probably staring at you like, oh my god, somebody please call the cops for me, be careful, bye bye then, I, I don't know your name yet, my name? I'm Yuhito Asakawa. You can call me Yuhito. Yuhito. Yeah, people who know me like to call me like that. Don't call my full name, it makes me feel like a stranger. So you want to be friends with her, I'm guessing? I mean, kind of. You're being overly friendly. <clears throat> I mean, especially, he basically just copped a feel on her leg, and, uh, he doesn't want to be a stranger. <laughs> this has got to be one of the strangest visual novels I've ever dealt with. Okay. Uh, Yuito, we met last night. Right. So you can tell me your name? Or can you tell me your name? I'm Mizuki Hitomi. You can call me Hitomi. I've always liked that name. I think it 
brings back to some of the old anime I used to watch. Oh, what was that girl's name? Uh, crap, I can't think of what it is now. It, it's a great fighter in the anime, though. I'll, I'll remember it some of the time. <clears throat> uh, okay, Hitomi. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, thank you for helping me out. Huh? I feel much better. Oh, for when he knocked her down, probably. Uh, good to know. It's my fault, I am sorry. Did I make a nuisance of myself? Well, yeah, I would say... I would say yes. Of course. And she's like, this... No, not at all. No, I'm, I'm just fine. Thank you. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I say goodbye to her and think about her on my way home. You know, initially I thought when, uh... <clears throat> when, uh... Our friend was like, she saw, when she when she was explaining that she saw somebody die. The first, th first thought in my head was, that girl. And I was like, holy crap, they introduced her just to kill her. That's so messed up. So I'm a little happy that she's, she's okay. She's outwardly weak, but inwardly strong, which fits my impression of her. But a lack of vigilance is probably her big weakness. She probably won't be able to put up a fight if danger comes. Eh, uh, never mind. I warned her. She will probably be more careful after I suddenly scared her. I don't think she will. I'm actually kind of curious now if she's not going to be one of the next victims. I'm really worried about our friend, though. Yep, there we go. More worried about Nanami. Good call. I better go home now to check on her. Uh, Yuhito, you're back. Uh, how's Nanami doing? Uh-oh. Oh, man, we got the dot, dot, dots. That's not a good sign. What is wrong? Yuhito, what did you two encounter in the forest? Uh, I don't know. I left Nanami there for a while. Why? Why did you leave her alone there? I had something to attend to? Forget it. Luckily, she sent... You sent her back in time. Otherwise, she would be dead. Wait, what? Yeah. Right. What? <clears throat> didn't you see Nanami's blood on your clothes when you took her back? Of course I saw, but I didn't think she was so badly injured. There's a gash on her body that was caused by a sharp object. Uh, that means... It's definitely not an accident. Someone did this to her. Based on the gash, the man who hurt Nanami is likely to be responsible for the murders in the town. Oh boy. So, the dead girl is also... Yes, the wounds on the dead girl and Nanami were both caused by the same sharp object. How could she know that? I mean, unless she's just going on the premise of, say, a knife, but... I mean, th there's a big difference between, like, a knife, or a saw, or a scalpel. Just, just, you know, I mean, these are obviously way far ends of the spectrum, but still, I mean, how could she know it's the exact same object? Hmm. Is she... I don't know, she claims herself as like a healer type. I don't know. This guy, his, his parents are like freaking super parents. They can, they can do everything, obviously. Maybe they're really the ones who keep the, who keep the uh, town running smoothly. The way the gashes were made is also the same. Hmm. Nanami. How is she doing now? Nanami is badly hurt and running a fever now. She's very weak at the moment. I've placed her in our vacant room. Okay. Can I see her now? She's very weak. You'd better not disturb her. Okay. Yeah, right? Don't cause any undue stress. So just let her rest. And I don't know, say a prayer or, or light some incense or candle or something. <coughs> Excuse me. It never occurred to me that the newly discovered place in the forest is the killer's hideout. The killer must have been watching us before Nanami and I split up. Yeah, and you would think that he would not leave her alone. I mean, sure, 
it might have caused her some emotional distress to see a dead body, or in this case, not see a dead body, and she would have been fine. But to leave her behind and then she was attacked? Uh, dude, you messed up. Bad. Fear and panic runs through me when I think about it. I should have gathered the, ki the killer was around since I found the first dead girl there. I thought the killer just picked a random place to dump the body. I made a fatal mistake getting Nanami into danger and nearly got her killed. Nanami, although in bad condition, still alive, my nightmare didn't come true. Yeah, and you had better be vigilant so it doesn't come true, man. Watching you. So watching you. Like, like hardcore watching you. From now on, I will try my best to protect her. Should I go to see Nanami now? Ugh. Oh, jeez, I hate these kinds of questions. Because the mom said, don't cause her any stress. She's very weak. Mm. It, it really sucks, but no. We should let her rest, um, let her recoup. We can see her tomorrow, and she might be a little stronger. We can, I don't know, bring her some juice or something. But if we don't go and see her, she might try to get up, which would cause problems. Oh, jeez. Oh, God, I wish I... Can I save? Yosh. Safe. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna save right here just in case something gets messed up. <clears throat> All right. Uh, sure. All right. Let's uh let's let's uh, let's go see Nanami just in case. I don't want her getting up out of bed. All right. Uh, I don't want to risk her getting up and opening the wound or anything. So we'll go see her. Make sure she's laying down. Maybe fluff her pillow or something. Give her some water. You know, usually these, these things are color-coded. I get, kind of give you an idea of what you should or shouldn't do. <laughs> I guess the dev in this in this case is smart and won't let you find out what you're doing before you do it. Alright, so let's go see Nanami. Maybe we can get her some water. I must go see Nanami on all accounts. She's so important to me. I decide I'll be there with her at all times. I better go see her so that the pain in my heart will be reduced. I open the door quietly. Aww. Oh, look at her. She's so adorable. She's got a little bow in her hair. A little cover pulled up on her. All tucked in. Aww. <clears throat> Nanami is awake. She turns to look at me when she hears the door open. Words escape me all of a sudden. I feel so happy when I see the tender look on her face. When I think about how I may never see her face again, the pain runs through me once more. N Nanami, are you in any pain? She shakes her head, trying to tell me she's okay, but her expression betrays her. Yeah, I can imagine getting cut or stabbed or whatever exactly happened. It's probably left a quite a bit of a problem for her. Just, just lay still, girl. I'll get you whatever you need. Water, broth, fluff your pillow. Just get better, okay? Yuito, I'm so glad you came. Ah. I'm sorry to have worried you, Yuito. No, don't say that. It's my fault. Oh, she's got a little smile on her face and everything. She's so happy to see us right now. That is, that is adorable. I know, I keep saying that. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. Sorry, Nanami. I couldn't protect you and drag you into danger. No, it, it's not true, Yuito. Don't blame yourself. I didn't listen to you and went into the dark room. I, oh, oh. <laughs> whoops. Wrong voice. Uh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah, Nanami suddenly got stabbed and turned into a guy. Sorry. Anyways. <laughs> I didn't listen to you and went to the dark room out of curiosity. If I had stayed outside, this wouldn't have happened. None of me. Now I finally realize how precious her smile is. I almost lost her. And her smile. 
yeah. Although, I'm really curious about what happened to her and what she saw. I refrained from asking. What she went through is terrible. She's in recovery, and I can't let her relive that nightmare again. Take a good rest. I, I should leave now. My stay will disturb her. Now she needs some rest. Aw, uh, she, she looks so sad now. <clears throat> Could you stay? None of me asked me to stay as I'm leaving. Uh, Yuito, could you stay with me for a while? But don't I disturb you? No, it, it's okay. Sure. Since Nanami wants me around, I'll stay. I'll go back and sit on her bed. Yuito, you saved my life. <laughs> Don't mention it. You're just being polite. Really? Yes. Protecting you has been my duty since childhood. But this time, I failed. <clears throat> not at all. You did a good job. Eh, not really. You, you, kind of his fault you got stabbed in the first place. I mean, I understand she doesn't want to, like, burden him or anything, or blame him, but come on. Let's be real. It's his fault. Oh. If I were out there by myself, I would be dead now. This tragedy wouldn't have happened if I didn't step away from you. Nobody could have seen it coming, so Yuito shouldn't feel responsible for what happened to me. I couldn't be better now, see? I'm smiling. Oh, oh, that gets you right in the ticker. Oh, man. That cuts deep. Like, you can tell... Well, okay, maybe you guys can't, but I can tell. Seems like... She's just putting on a front for us, like she's trying to she's trying to be stronger than she is right now. Oh man. Aw. I've liked your just smile since childhood. You're making me blush. Aw. Really? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'll wear a smile all the time. That can be dangerous. You you really should you really gotta be careful. Don't, 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 don't smile all the time. You know, if you're if you're upset, be upset. It's good to smile, but sometimes that can that, that can get people in trouble. Sometimes you just gotta talk things out. You gotta frown a little bit, talk things out, smooth things over. Deal. I fear very deeply that I may lose everything I have. This tragedy makes me realize all my beloved aren't as strong as I think. <clears throat> On the contrary, an incident may take away the lives of those I love. I want to be with them every minute and every moment. Ah. Not me. What's wrong? My heart suddenly contracts in pain after hearing your voice. Nothing. The wound really gave me a hard time. Sadness hits me after I hear what Nanami said. Nanami, hang in there. I'll call my mom. No, Yuito, I'm okay. Don't worry. Er, <laughs> there I go again. Uh, don't worry, I'm not going to die now. What if the wound keeps bleeding? Don't worry, I'm fine. I can take care of myself. Uh, maybe, no, let's, let's... Come on, call, no, call the mom. Call the mom. Just in case, call the mom. Uh, Yuito, don't bother your mom. I'll be fine if you stay here with me a bit longer. Okay. I sit quietly beside Nanami. She must be too uneasy to let me go. She's in bad condition and needs someone to keep her company. I'd better stay here with her. I'm sorry to give you so much trouble. Uh... Nanami breaks the silence. Uh, I need to think about how to return the favor. Your full recovery will be the biggest favor. Get well soon. <laughs> okay. What else? Uh. Is there anything you really want? Anything? 
Uh, no, no, don't bother. Yeah, just, just get better. We don't have time to be thinking about other things. You get better, and we'll see what happens after that. Deal? No. I'll tell you if I think of something up. Sure. So, get well soon. No problem. Well, I don't know. I mean, this is kind of waving some serious death flags right now. <clears throat> Before you came to my rescue, I kept thinking about what would happen to me if I stayed in that scary room. No, not to me. I will never leave you behind. I know. I believed you'd come to save me. But even with that in mind, I was still in agony. You were injured and in great pain. I was in pain. Physically and mentally. Hmm. Before you came to me, I couldn't move due to the wounds, so I struggled to stand. Then I saw the man in black standing in that dark room. I couldn't see his face and didn't know what he was going to do to me. He stabbed me first, and then stopped to watch around. That's... Then maybe stop to look around? So that, you know, maybe... He seemed to be looking for someone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, like, cut her, and then he was, like, looking around to see if anyone was gonna run in and... And, I don't know, do something. Or he'd have to do something. Oh, that could have been a bad situation. <coughs> I was wondering whether he was waiting for you. Ooh. Yeah, that that could have been a very real problem. Like, we could... Oh, man. We could both have been wiped out right then and there. Holy crap. Hmm. I kind of wonder how that would play out, though. Like, it, let, let's just say, worst case scenario happened. The, the game let us bust back in there. Would we then fight the guy? Or maybe scare him off. Hmm. I kind of wonder how that would go. I'm curious. Yeah, I know. Bad thing to be curious about. But what can I say? Be weird. Probably in the end, it would be really weird. Kind of disjointed. Fun, though. Oh. <clears throat> I didn't... I didn't want you to come to rescue me and hoped you would never come here. Wait. What? What? Why didn't you want us to save you? Well, I kind of get it, because, like, she didn't want him to, like, bust in there with the dude there and get stabbed or something, but we had to save you. We had to. I mean, okay, we didn't have to, but we had to. You guys know what I mean. I even thought about ending my life as long as I could stop you from coming. Whoa. That's... that's not cool. You're like... You're a childhood friend. Most importantly, you're like our best friend. You can't talk like that. Not allowed. We kinda need you. Not of me. I said I wouldn't leave you behind. No matter what your choice was, I would have taken you out of that room. Yeah, you came anyway. I was losing my consciousness when you opened the door. I was too frightened to think about what would happen to you, and then I passed out. When I woke up, I found you were carrying me on your back and running towards the town. I was so happy. That's the reason why Nanami refused to leave in my dream. I completely believe my dream has forecast everything. Nanami, why are you so caring? Nanami, why did you choose to die? How could you do this to yourself? Uh, did it ever occur to you? That those who care about you will suffer like hell if you're gone? Sorry. I can't help shouting at Nanami. 
My memory and dream coincide with each other at that moment, dealing a serious blow to my heart. <clears throat> I feel so sorry for Nanami. Sorry, I was a little agitated. Uh, sorry. It's okay. Nanami, you mean a lot to me. I can't lose you. We made a deal a long time ago about being together forever, remember? Yeah, for better or for worse, till death do us part. Oh. Oh my. Oh my. Let's keep it that way. I know. I'm sorry. Don't say that. Get well soon. Did you say that no matter what I want, you will give it to me? Right. I want you to take care of yourself and stay with me forever. But, Yuhito... Aw. Do I make myself clear? <laughs> Aw. He wants to make sure his little waifu stays around. <clears throat> yeah. Let's renew our deal. Okay. We renewed our deal, which is that we must care for ourselves and be together forever. I'm clearly aware that I can't lose Nanami. She is a part of me. I've had a crush on her since a long time ago. Nobody can replace her in my heart. I haven't revealed my feelings to her yet, but there's still plenty of time, so there's no hurry. Nanami belongs to me, and nobody can take her away from me. Oh, I don't know, dude, that's, um... <clears throat> I understand the sentiment there, I really do, but... That's... We're getting some serious death flags here. I'm really getting worried, like, towards the end, she's gonna, like... Everything's gonna go great, and then she's just gonna get taken from us. That'd be horrible. Oh, man. Careful what you wish for, dude. And careful about your de the things that you say, you know... Until you're sure that they're going to happen. Be very careful. <clears throat> Yuito. Yeah, Nanami. Um, I... Actually, I hope you can call me Shio from now on. She then takes on a shy look. I know we are more than common friends to each other. Although we hide our hearts behind our words, we feel the same deep down. Uh, Shio. I've been expecting this relationship. I will cherish Nanami, but there's a disturbing feeling in my heart. I fear I can't protect her. Don't you like calling me that? Uh, yeah. I'd like to call you Shio. I can't say no to Nanami to this relationship that I've long been yearning for. Although I'm still a little shaken, I must protect Nanami. I will sacrifice everything I have to protect her from harm. Shio. What? What? Is, is there a problem? But, no. I feel a little weird. Nanami is very shy now since nobody has ever called her by her last name before. Even her parents never call her Shio. The way you address me, it's like I'm your girlfriend. Aww. But, really? It's okay. Perhaps we... Nanami buried her head into the quilt and replied in a low voice, but I didn't catch her. Shio, what did you say? I... Uh, nothing. <laughs> okay. I'll call you Shio then. Yes. Okay, Shio. I feel a little awkward calling her Shio, but I try to keep cool. <clears throat> yes. N now you'd better have a good sleep. Yuito, are you leaving? No, don't worry, Shio. I won't go anywhere while you're sleeping. Thank you. Aww. Nanami falls asleep. She must be very tired. 
And you probably might want to go have your mom just double check her, make sure everything's okay. You know, just in case. I mean, this is a great lovey-dovey portion, and I'm kind of worried now. <clears throat> Sitting near Nanami, I hear her gentle breathing. In my eyes, she's so wonderfully perfect. At this moment, I wish I could be around her forever. We will never part. She belongs to me and only me. That's kind of possessive, dude. I don't really know how I'm feeling about that one. After supper, my mom asked me to go to sleep in my own room. I'm reluctant to leave Nanami's room, but after all, we can't share the same room. My parents had no idea that we slept in my room the other day. If they knew, they would give us no peace. My mom will check on Nanami at set intervals tonight, so it's impossible for me to stay here. I go to my room obediently. Nanami can take a good rest. I'm a little concerned about her, but we can spend time together again after she recovers. I recollect what has happened today while sitting on the bed. We met the killer when Nanami and I went to the forest. <clears throat> None of me was badly injured, and I didn't see the killer. Hmm. That does seem kind of odd. Like, he was hiding somewhere in the house? Maybe? Or... or... That just seems kind of weird, because the picture of the house wasn't... It wasn't a very big house. There wasn't... There didn't seem like there were that many places for him to hide, but... The killer must have stood far away in the darkness and waited for an opportunity to, opportunity to attack when we got to the forest. After we split up, he finally struck. Is the killer still there? Did he go there by accident, or does he hide there? Did he go after us because he ran into us today? No. Maybe he targeted me when I went to the forest alone to investigate the dead girl. If that's the case, the killer probably thinks I will dig into the murder. Therefore, the missing body in the forest must have been disposed of by him. But how does that explain why the killer didn't kill me today? It doesn't add up. If the killer wants to hide his tracks, he probably has a better way. The town is surrounded by the sea, so wouldn't it be better to dump the body in the sea? The murder in the town seems like a demonstration made by the killer to the people in the town. There's the possibility that someone in the town may have disposed of that body. All my previous speculations don't hold water from this perspective. If the killer doesn't care about his murders being spotted, what's his purpose? Who is he? Uh, up to now, I still have no clue about what the killer is up to. If I investigate this further, my family and friends will no doubt be in danger. Yeah, and, I mean, shouldn't this be left to, like, people that do this for a living? I mean, I don't think we have a cop shop on the island, but maybe there's a detective, you know, some sort of law enforcement or something? Anybody other than just you? No offense, but I don't think you have the training you need to finish this out, dude. Not without bad things happening, left and right. Should I continue my investigation? Judging from the current situation, investigating this further is no good for me. If I choose to go on with my investigation, alone and helpless, I'll probably get nowhere. The safety of my family and friends is much more important than finding out the killer. I would rather give up this investigation than put my family and friends in danger. Well, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of an apt... Uh, um, reaction or an app decision it's the right choice anyways but nobody can assure me that my family and friends uh, will be safe if I stop the investigation hmm that is very true but I mean is he really investigating seems to me like he's just kind of stumbled across things up to this point now, uh, what should I do? Forget it. I'll call it a day, figure out that problem tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, most things seem better after a, after a nice rest, so it'd probably be best if you just go to sleep, 
Think about it tomorrow. Or the day after. Oh, boy. Oh. Hey, sweet, we ended the chapter. Woo! And no one else died. <clears throat> Just the really, well, not me almost died, but... We, uh, we won't go to won't go too far into that. Well, I'm having such a problem speaking. I'm sorry, guys. Dot, dot, dot. What is that sound? What? I didn't hear anything. What was that sound? I was awakened by the sharp sound in the hallway in the middle of the night. Ooh. -hoo. So, did he... Or whoever the killer is? <clears throat> did they follow us? Are they going to finish the job? Well, that's messed up. What the hell happened? I lie in bed and concentrate on listening to the sound in the hallway. The sound of liquid splattering is heard. Did my mom, who's taking care of Shio, make that sound? It sounds so familiar to me, but I can't recall where I've heard it. I haven't regained my senses from the sleep. I sit up and try to wake up from my dream. This is my home, and except for my family, no one is here. But wait. Nanami is also here tonight. Yeah, she's resting in the guest room. But why is Nanami here? Oh, that's... Okay. He's all hazy and, and messed up from his sleep, so... Alright, because she was injured when we went to the forest today. Where did I hear that sound? Where exactly? Ah, I remember it once appeared in my nightmare in which Nanami was brutally killed. Oh, crap. Really? <clears throat> oh boy, this is this can't end well. Nanami killed. Right in that nightmare, the sound occurred in my nightmare. My head is completely clear when I call that recall that dream, and bursts of fear and chill runs through me. I suddenly have a bad feeling. Everything in my nightmare really happened. What's going on outside? No. I rush to the room where Nanami is. Shio. I start to call out, but Nanami is in the hallway. There's no one in the dark hallway, and the doors to the rooms of my parents and Nanami are closed. Wait. I start to call out to Nanami in the hallway. Oh. Wow. I'm sorry, guys. I think I completely read that wrong. Holy crap. I'm stupid. Uh, Alright, so he goes in the hallway and starts to call out, but there's no one there. All the doors are closed. All right. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Sorry, guys. I'm apparently having some trouble reading, too. Can't talk, can't read. What good am I? It doesn't seem that my mom came to Anatomy's room, so who made that sound? Shio, answer me. Oh, man. My voice echoed in the quiet hallway. After my voice faded away, silence reigned once again. I heard no response. I start knocking on Nanami's door. Shio, can you hear me? I'm Yuhito. Answer me. No matter how loud I call Nanami, there's no sound in her room. Nanami is asleep? No way. Not after I knocked on her door so hard. Something's wrong. I gave the door a hard push and it didn't move an inch. Is it locked? Yuhito, what's wrong? Why do you make such a loud noise? My mom came out when I didn't know what to do. Give me the key to Shio's room, now. What? The key to Shio's room. Yuito, I know you're a boy and curious about a girl's body. Even so, I will never allow you to take advantage of her. Oh, jeez. It's not like that. Alright, look, we're, we had a nightmare, okay? Just, just... You go check on her then. I don't care, but... Come on. Somebody's gotta check on her, right? Right? Right. What? No. She was in trouble. Why? What's going on here? Her face changed at my words and she knew I wasn't joking. No time to explain. Open the door. Okay. Oh, man. Oh. What? Shio. When I entered, I saw an empty room. There was blood on the floor that definitely belonged to Nanami. The blood trail goes all the way to the window and beyond. The killer must have come from the window. How is it possible the killer came in? 
What the hell is he? When I catch him, I'm gonna give him a hard time. Yeah. Um. They often say, I'll have no fear like a woman scorned, but, uh. Whoever said that obviously never met a pissed off mom. <clears throat> Don't worry, the killer is gone. My mom locked none of his room from the outside. If there were no window here, it would be com it would be a completely locked room. The killer had no option other than to take Nanami away via the window. Even if you're strong, it's very dangerous for you to play tough with him. I know. We need to find her now. Yeah. You and Dad stay at home and be careful. I'll look for Shio. No way. Your dad and I will look for Nanami and you stay at home. Yeah, she, she's got a point, dude. Listen to Mom. Mom know best. Don't worry. I can protect myself. Trust me. Uh, dude, listen to your parents, maybe? Maybe? Well, no, because I probably wouldn't. I'd probably be like, yeah, sure, I'll stay home, and then as soon as they leave, I'd take off too. What can I say? You know, she needs help. You too. I rush out before my mom finishes speaking. I run very quickly in the dark. My head is totally blank. Not to me. I have promised to protect her. I will sacrifice everything I have to protect her. I have made a promise. But why did this happen so soon? I can't bear the pain of losing Nanami. Sorry, Shio. I like her so much and want to be with her forever. But my desire is crushed easily by the killer. No. I still have hope. I need to find Nanami now. Nanami, hang in there. Oh man. Boy, we are we are just booking it, aren't we? Ah. Suddenly I'm met with a pungent smell of blood nearly choked until I faint. I begin to feel nauseous. I keep myself from vomiting and start looking around. I find a black trail that I missed on the ground. I look down and carefully check the black liquid. Later, I find out that it's human blood. It seems that I'm heading in the right direction. So what? Like, her wound reopened? Or he made a new one. Oh man, no. no uh, don't think that. She's gotta be okay, I hope. I know, I said it was probably a death flag, but I don't want her to die like Nanami. Did I arrive at the right place? Is Nanami here? She is alive, but... Cutting myself off from those scary thoughts, I start looking around. Covering my nose and mouth, I go to the place that reeks with the strong smell of blood. Oh. Dang. Shio. I see a girl lying on the ground in blood. She's not of me. Despair and fear run through me. I can't control myself and start trembling. I'm frozen with fear. I keep calling Nanami in my trembling voice. Shio. 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 Nanami, I can't lose you. Please answer me. Please. Shio. Oh, man. No matter how loudly I call her, she does not respond. Nanami is dead. Shio. I lost Nanami, my childhood sweetheart, and her sweet smile. Why? I wanted to protect her and cherish her, but now she's gone. Why can't I protect her? Why does the killer take her away from me? Ah. My roar and the sudden thunder shatter the silence. The, the, the killer committed the sin. Wow. <clears throat> he took the life of my love. I'll hunt him down. No matter who he is or where he hides, I will find him. He's going to pay for what he did. He is utterly devoid of any conscience. You mark my words. I'll find you. I'll make you suffer. Oh. We lost our little friend? What the hell? I won't let you get away easily. You mark my words.
Suddenly the lightning flashes and I am struck dumb to see a shadow in front of me. The shadow runs to Nanami. Suddenly I realize it must be the killer. Uh, no, I'm guessing from that silhouette it's either Mom or that, um, crap, what was her name? The little maid girl we met earlier. Hmm. But, we're gonna figure that out next time, guys. So, hope you enjoyed the episode. I know, I know. I suck. But, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. And until next time, take care of yourselves. I hope you have a good day. And goodbye. Hmm. I can't believe they kill her off. But seriously? I mean, I know there was some death flags, but God, they didn't have to kill her, right? Well, maybe she's still alive. That'd be awesome.